Hello, this is Mark Hubbs with Eris Gone Bullet Molds. There's been a lot of interest lately in making combustible cartridges. This is due to the availability of the Lee conical bullet and also the Eris Gone 44 caliber Johnson and Dow bullet. I'd like to talk to you about lubing combustible cartridges. Most of the folks who are making them are making them dry and they'll add lube over the bullet or sometimes uh, include a fiber wad within the cartridge, but that's not the way they were made originally. And with period sources, I'm going to try to show you how uh, those cartridges were lubed originally and how you can do it yourself. Stay tuned. The first standardized cartridges for 44s were meant for the Dragoon revolvers. They were first made because the Colt flasks issued with the Dragoons could not throw a consistent charge and it caused a lot of grumbling with the troops. The cartridge design settled on was built exactly like the rifled musket cartridge. This included a greased bullet rolled in a brown paper tube tied at one end and with a separate powder chamber inside. The tail was folded and creased to keep the powder in. The tail had to be torn off and the bullet unwrapped from the cartridge for loading. Obviously not a very good setup. Making Dragoon cartridges might be a good topic for another video someday. Eventually the U.S. Army began to develop a consumable cartridge similar to what was being offered by the Colt Cartridge Works. Experiments done by Major John Symington of the Allegheny Arsenal in 1860 indicates that Allegheny was using a wax and tallow mixture on its revolver bullets. He also mentions that Colt cartridge bullets were dipped after the cartridge was formed in melted paraffin. Major Symington complained that the 36 caliber cartridges from his rival the St. Louis Arsenal were faulty and that they leaded the barrel. This is probably due to them being unlubricated. He recommended that all cartridges be lubricated and suggested that paraffin wax should be used. I have to mention this quick story. Symington fired all the boys that were working at the Allegheny Arsenal in 1859 because they were being unsafe and smuggling matches into the laboratory, I guess for their pipes and, and so forth. Uh, he hired uh, 200 girls instead because he felt that they were more safe in that environment. Well, the same day that the Battle of Antietam was going on in, uh, in Maryland, there was an explosion in the laboratories at the uh, Allegheny Arsenal, and 78 of those women and, uh, and girls were killed in that explosion. Of course, Symington was excoriated in the Pittsburgh press. Uh, he asked for retirement. Uh, it was not granted to him by President Lincoln. Uh, and he died two years later, a broken man, after 45 years of service in the U.S. Army. Simonton mentioned that prior to his experiments and subsequent recommendation of paraffin, that a tallow and beeswax mixture of equal parts was in use for revolvers. The 1860 Ordnance Manual later recommends a mixture of eight parts of wax to one part of tallow for many bullets. This is a more logical mix, and I suspect this was also used on revolver bullets, although that is not specifically called out in the manual. The equal parts mixture would have been too tacky and would have easily smeared off the bullet in hot weather. But it appears that paraffin was not embraced by the Army arsenals, despite Simonton's recommendation, although it probably was used by contractors, especially Colt. In March 1864, Major Frank Callender of the St. Louis Arsenal provided an estimate for the cost of making revolver cartridges at his arsenal. For both 36 and 44 caliber, the materials list included tallow and beeswax, and part of the listing of labor costs included dipping balls. The assumption can be made from this that the bullets were being dipped in a mixture of melted tallow and beeswax. A similar report from Waterville Arsenal also shows expenditures for tallow, beeswax, and labor from greasing. Here is more evidence. This is an original cartridge from the Richmond Laboratories, 36 caliber, and you can see the residue from beeswax and tallow still adhering to the bullet. Up close it's even more evident. Here's another example. This is an original cartridge by an unknown maker. The bullet is very similar to the Cold Cartridge Works bullet, but I'm not sure this is where that came from. But you can see there's very little oxidation on the lead of the bullet. Uh, and it seems to have a coating, and I assume this is probably a paraffin-coated bullet. I decided to experiment with lubing bullets with uh, paraffin, so I bought some Gulf Wax brand. It comes in one-pound boxes, and inside that are four four-ounce uh, blocks. 
A modern paraffin is a little different from that from the old days. It's had steric acid added to it, which makes it harder and increases the melting point from about 100 degrees up to 125 degrees. To offset that, I decided to add uh, one ounce of lard, uh, sort of replacing tallow. And you can see my total uh, weight of five ounces here. An old hot pot to melt it in. Uh, this is an old veteran that I used to take on archaeological uh, work out in the Pacific and remote areas. and ate a lot of soup and chili out of this thing in the old days. But now it's my wax melter. And I throw it in there and melt it all together just like I do with the uh, beeswax and tallow. Any kind of controllable heat source will work for this purpose. So I'm going to drop uh, the four ounce block of paraffin straight in there along with one ounce of lard. And we'll let that melt down. It'll take a few minutes. And once it's good and warm, we're going to pour it into uh, some muffin tins with liners as a better way to store it and use it later. Okay, it's all melted and blended together. I'm going to unplug it. I don't need any more heat. And what I'm going to do now is pour uh, the mixture into these smaller containers. And they'll harden up in here. It'll be easier to use a little bit at a time later. Use two layers of uh, liners in case, because uh, they may stick to the first one. Sometimes they don't. And the biggest, uh, the biggest hint on doing this is to make sure uh, that your wife is not at home. Uh, maybe send her out shopping, give her some money, send her shopping. And then she'll never know that you used her muffin tins to uh, take bullet loop. This is what I dip my bullets in. I also use it for mini balls. It's just a little basin. I think it was designed as some kind of candle originally. And I use uh, canned heat, Sterno, as my heat source. Uh, it works great because I can use the little lid uh, to control the amount of flame and to actually shut it off when I need to shut it off. In any kind of container that will offer a little bit of depth to dip and to keep something hot uh, will work for this purpose. Okay, we're going to try lubing some bullets now. And this is what we'll be lubing. These are the uh, cartridges I've made up previously with the Johnson & Dow bullet. Uh, and this is the standard ordnance manual suggestion of an 8 to 1 mix. One part tallow and eight parts beeswax and we want to dip the bullet according to what we have read earlier up to the paper and shake it off we want as little of the lube as possible on the to stick to the bullet so it's got to be fairly hot the hot the bullet will act as sort of a uh, behold the the coolness of the room and if you're not careful uh, it will congeal very quickly onto that bullet so you can see here it's coming off pretty good. Definitely want to make sure that the grease groove is filled. Down to the paper. Shake it off. And we'll put them over here to cool. We'll get to the point eventually where the grease is not hot again and I'll have to heat it back up. Uh, so I don't get too much on the bullet itself. And we're gonna do about half of these with the army suggestion as far as grease. Then I'll clean out my pot here and we'll heat up a paraf the paraffin mixture and we'll try it with the paraffin also. Okay, now we're gonna try it with paraffin mixture. Again we'll dip up to the paper and try to dab off the tip a little bit. And you can see I think uh, there's less of it sticking, less of it sticking with the with the paraffin. Down to the paper. I'll go ahead and do all 
all of these and I'll have them ready uh, to test fire tomorrow hopefully if I can get to the range so here's the result the bullet on the left is the ordnance manual mixture beeswax and tallow the one on the right is the paraffin mixture as you can see the coating is very uh, very thin and clear on both of them uh, my experience at the range was that they essentially uh, performed exactly the same so maybe the paraffin uh, is a viable option and it's much less expensive to assemble the components the only difference I could determine if there was one uh, is that the paraffin seemed to look, be a little bit harder and even in the 95 degree temperatures did not rub off as bad as the other version. They both did rub, but the paraffin was a little bit stiffer. Well, thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. Uh, please give me a like if you enjoyed it. And uh, keep an eye at uh, Air's Gone Bullets at WebStarts.com and I'll be announcing when the next batch of bullet modes are available.